Well, welcome to the International Word Center Church. This is our Thursday upload, and we're glad that you joined us, and you can come back as often as you want, because this, this is pre-recorded for your convenience. Well, we want to just say thank you to everybody out there that has been donating uh, to the ministry. You can always donate on the donate button. Uh, with the recent update of our website, there is a little glitch, so check back with us here in a couple of days, and it should be fixed uh, for those who have maybe donated already and didn't wasn't able to. But hey, just this is a day that the Lord has made, and we're going to be glad and rejoice in it. In other words, we can expect good things because God is only good. So if your expectation isn't up, our prayer is that by the end of this video, you will expect good things and great things because our expectations are in the Lord. And the word of God says those who put their hope in him shall never be disappointed. He's a good God. He's a mighty God. He can do all things. There's nothing he cannot do. Now, he is a good God, but there's also a severity to him. There is going to be a judgment day. Amen. But those who have chosen to make Jesus the Lord of their life, and learning more and more progressively so every day to walk in righteousness, those things that come into conformity to God's ways of doing and being right, his will. Amen. Judgment is not for us. The wrath of God is not for us. But God will judge sin one day and all those who practice sin. But God has given us more than enough time, more than enough chance. I believe God pulls on everybody's heartstring more than once, twice, thrice, a hundred times over. Amen. I know he did for me and I just thank God he opened up my heart and opened up my eyes to see and hear. Amen. Opened up my ears to hear, my eyes to see and gave me grace to choose him. The word of God says we did not choose him, but he chose us. We didn't come to God, those of you that are born again and in the household of faith, but God drew you to himself. You should just be grateful, 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 grateful that you understand and know truth and walking in truth. But today we're going to get into the word of God. But before we do, again, we just want to offer up some thanksgiving and prayer to God, thanking him for what he's given us and how he's blessed us. Amen. Thanking him for you uh, who have helped support us and praying for us. Amen. But let's pray for about today's teaching because there, it's on my heart that there's some people out there that need to receive from God and we're going to focus in on one aspect today in the message that the Lord put on my heart. It's about receiving your healing. Amen. And we're going to get into it here in a moment. But as we do teach on primarily talking about receiving healing today, amen, realize that these principles that we're teaching about healing work in any area of your life that God has promised that he will bless you with from finance to wisdom, to peace, to joy, to protection. Amen. These same principles work. So you need to join us, amen, on Sundays. We started a new series this past Sunday on the law of faith. There are laws in faith, amen. Now, when I talk about laws, I'm not talking about laws that you can't do more than 55 miles per hour, do's and don'ts, do's and don'ts, amen. But I'm not from New York, but, <laughs> or New Jersey, amen. But uh, what we're talking about, is laws in as or in comparison to like natural laws or laws of physics. Amen. Uh, and if you don't put those laws into motion or practice those laws or have those laws uh, in involved in what you're doing, then the laws of physics do doesn't. Well, let's let's give you an example, uh, just like in the law of lift, which causes an airplane to fly. Amen. There's certain things and I'm not a physicist. But I, I, you'll get a, you'll get the gist of what I'm saying. I know just enough to be dangerous. Amen. But uh, the law of lift, you do need to have certain dynamics with the wing, like a bird's wing, shaped in such a way that it forces air over the top that's traveling a quicker uh, or, or traveling at a different speed than underneath. And the, the, so what happens is it creates a vacuum. I may not be explaining this right. And then you have thrust, which the engines on an airplane or a jet create. And 
if you practice these laws of lift, and there's other things that come into it, like drag uh, and that kind of thing, you get the drag just right. You can lift a plane, a thousand, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds of an airplane off the ground. But if you don't have enough thrust, if you don't have the right dynamics on the wings, you will not fly. Amen. The right brothers learn that the hard way. Amen. But you don't have to learn it the hard way. The word of God gives us explicit, clear explanation of how faith works. And too many believers I have seen in past, including myself, amen, uh, that we see it, but we don't do it. Amen. So let's get in the word today. And again, just want to say thank you for joining us on behalf of uh, my wife, Helen and me, Rick and the International Word Center Church family. We say thank you. Come join us anytime. Uh, keep saying it. Uh, we're just believing God for the right timing to get back together in person. Amen. You know, and fellowshipping face to face, so to speak. Amen. But we're just listening for God and being led by him. But in the meantime, we're going to keep doing what God to has told us to do. And that's help build you up so that you can do the work of the ministries to bring the church, the body of Christ to maturity. Amen. To do the work of the ministry, to be servants in the household of God, to be servants and preachers of the gospel, going out, getting people saved, laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover, casting out devils. That's the work of the ministry, but you got to be equipped to do it. And God has left us certain gifts in men and women, certain endowments and abilities by the Holy Spirit to help us grow up in the things of God. So let's pray before we get into the word today. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. And we thank you for your spirit, God, that helps us and teaches us and leads us and guides us. So we're looking to you right now, God, and asking to give us words, God, anointed words full of your love and faith and power and life, God, that it'll penetrate into our spirit today, that our faith will be activated in you and that we'll receive all that you have for us and be blessed to be a blessing, be empowered, God, to do what you said we can do, be who you've called us to be and do what you call us to do in Jesus name. If you agree with that, say amen. Well, we're going to get right into it. I don't want to take a long time today, but I know there's something that you need to hear. I mean, if you want a title for today, I really didn't have a title. It's just something on my heart. I want to talk about how to receive your healing. If you've been diagnosed with COVID-19 or any other sickness or disease, if you'll practice these principles we're going to talk about today that are in the word of God, it will connect you. It will cause you to lay hold of the power of God because God's already healed us. Come on. Just like God has already saved the world. Amen. He's already healed all those who are sick. Amen. The same, the same sacrifice for your sins also paid the price for your healing. Glory to God, that's good news. Now, there's two ways, there's a lot of ways, should I say, that healing is received from God. Sometimes God will do just miraculous things, amen? Uh, if you remember, like, Jesus was at the Pool of Bethesda, and, and that's where once, in a pun, one, once every year the angel came down and stirred the water, and the first person got in, got healed, amen? Jesus met a man down there that had been bedridden for 30-something plus years, amen? And he told him, take up your bed and walk. But there was, I don't know how many, but it was filled with sick people all around those pools. But Jesus didn't, there's no record in the Bible that he healed all of them, but a miracle. The man's faith wasn't had anything to do with it. There was just a act of God that healed that man. God does that sometime. Amen. It's called the gifts of the spirit, the working of miracles, the gift of healing, the gift of faith. Amen. We can't make that happen whenever we want to make it happen. It's as the Holy Spirit wills. Believe for it. The Bible says earnestly desire it. Amen. It says that we can call on the elders and they can lay hands on us and we will be healed. Amen. But if they pray the prayer of faith. And that's what we want to talk to about today. For us as believers, we have an inheritance in Christ. In other words, when Jesus died for us and in our place and was resurrected from the dead, he left us an inheritance. He left us a will. There's things that belong to you and things that belong to me <clears throat> when we make Jesus the Lord of our life. Excuse me. <clears throat> when we make Jesus the Lord of our life, we not only get salvation, that's a great thing going to heaven, amen, For, uh, freed and forgiven of all our sins. But there's more in salvation than that. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. And we want to focus on healing, 
So if you need a healing today, you need to get your ears on, pay close attention, amen, that this is a word for you today from God. You've been asking God, what should, what do I do, God? What do I do? Amen. You've been, been in fear. You've been in panic mode. You've been in run to the doctor mode and there's nothing wrong with going to a doctor, but you need to go to the doctor in faith. Amen. So the other way that we can receive from God healing, amen, is by our faith. And the Bible tells us faith comes one way. Faith comes by hearing Romans 10, 17 and hearing by the word of God, the anointed word of God. And if you do a word study on that passage, it's more than just hearing the word of God with your natural ear. It's hearing and with the intent to do what the word tells you to do. And that brings me to, to this point today. And we're going to talk about that to receive your healing, it's done by faith and faith must be in your heart and faith comes by hearing the word of God. But then there's always an act of your faith. In other words, the faith does not connect you to the power of God for healing that we're talking about today until you act on what you believe. It's no different than when you got born again. Amen. Let me read a couple of scriptures and bring that out to you. But I'm thinking about the woman with the issue of blood that is talked about in the Bible. She said it to herself, if I just touches him, she acted on what she believed. Amen. The blind men called out to Jesus, have mercy on us, O son of David. They act, they believed Jesus could heal them. He even asked the question, do you believe I can do this? They said, yes, Lord. And the proof that they believed it is they acted. They shouted out. They ran after him. If you are believing God, if you have faith active and alive in your heart, you will act. And one of, one of the easiest way or the best way or quickest way to act on your faith is by what you say. Amen. Uh, in, in Matthew 4 and 23, uh, just talking about that Jesus died for us and in his death and his resurrection was healing. Amen. He went about in Mark 4 and 23, it says, and he went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news, the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every weakness and infirmity among the people. Now, this could be a whole teaching by itself. But what I wanted to do, I believe, with the help of the Holy Spirit here to read that scripture so you can pay close attention that when Jesus preached the gospel, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. That you can now enter in and be in fellowship with Father God. You can enter, enter in under his realm, under his rule again. Then he healed people. Because in the kingdom of God, there is no sickness and disease. Are you a citizen of the kingdom of God? Jesus said, pray this way. God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. You can have whatever heaven has because you're from heaven. Your citizenship is in the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, and first Peter, it says in two and 24, we're talking about that in salvation there's healing. It's already done. God has already healed you. You don't have to wait for God to heal. You need to receive what already is yours. Amen. And we're going to talk about that and give you some practical things to do to receive your healing today. If God leads you and there's someone God's using through the gifts of the spirit, working of miracles, gift of healings, amen. And those type of things, the, the gift of faith, then go, go to them as the Lord leads. But if you're at home by yourself, if you're in the hospital by yourself, amen. If you can't, don't know anybody that's functioning in that gifts of spirit or doing this uh, lockdown time, you can't get to them. You, my brother, you, my sister, by your faith, you can receive what God has already provided healing, just like God has already provided salvation. Amen. And first Peter two and 24 a familiar scripture for those who have been studying the Bible. It says who Jesus talking about Jesus, who our sins himself did bear in his own, in his body upon the tree, talking about the cross that to the sins that to the sins, having died to the righteousness, we may live. Amen. By whose stripes you were healed in that same passage in the same breath, if you will, the scriptures are declaring, and this actually we could go back to Isaiah 53, and it, it's letting us know that on the cross, Jesus' act of death on the cross not only paid the price for your sins, but 
prior to he was beat, he was punished for your sins. Amen. Sickness and disease is a form of punishment. It's a misfortune that comes on those who disobey God. God doesn't put it on you. I know some translations say, I will let none of those disease that I put upon the Egyptians to come upon you. But if you do a word study in that, it's a permissive verb and there's a causative, causative verb. A permissive verb is really what's used there when you hear saying God put this on somebody when it's bad and God put that on somebody. It's not saying that. It's saying God said, if you sin, you'll die. So when you sin, you die and God allows it because that's his judgment. Come on. So, but God is a merciful God and a forgiving God. When we make Jesus the Lord of our lives, no longer are we under the curse of the law of sin and death. In Romans 8, it says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. We've been redeemed from the curse. Galatians 3 tells us we've been redeemed from the curse of the law of sin and death. Amen. Meaning that when you sin, you get all these misfortunes. And one of those misfortunes, if you read in Deuteronomy 28, is sicknesses and diseases. I submit to you today, my brother and sister, when you made Jesus the Lord of your life, not only should you receive your salvation, forgiveness of, forgiveness of all your sins, amen, and made righteous, amen, but you need to receive your healing and your health. Amen. When the enemy comes and try to tell you you're nothing but a sinner and you're going to hell, you wouldn't take that. Amen. Unless you needed to repent of some wrongdoing, some sins in your life. Amen. And, and, but if you know you've been doing all you know and walking in the knowledge and the light that you know, if the devil tried to come or somebody tried to come and tell you uh, you going to hell for your sins, you'd say, no, I'm not. Jesus paid the price for my sin. You need to get just as loud and and clamorous, amen, uh, if so, when the devil comes or when symptoms scream at you and say, ah, you're sick, you have a disease, you need to declare, no, in the name of Jesus, by his stripes, I was healed. You know, the reason that many of us don't do that is because our faith is puny. Our faith is low. Amen. Why is our faith puny? Why is it low? And when I say puny or weak, amen, is because it's a short burst. Uh, we do good when we don't see a symptoms. We do good when the doctor tells us everything is good. Amen. But as soon as we see some alarming, alarming symptom, or we get a bad report from anybody, amen, a doctor or whoever, then our faith shrinks and goes away and we get into sadness and gloom and depression and down and out. No, my brother, no, my sister, if you would feed on the word of God, and that's what feeding on the word of God. And we're going to do some of that today. We're going to do what I like calling hit the gym or sparring. Amen. You need to spar all the time. You need to stay in the gym of soaking up the word of God all the time, especially in the area for your health, especially in the area for your, your finances, especially in the area of walking in love with your family and other relationships, because the enemy loves to attack those three areas because they mess with everything else in your life. Amen. But if you keep your faith fed by feeding on the word of God, then your faith will be long until you lay hold of it. Amen. It's sort of like you reaching out. And this is a, a, a very rough example. Faith is like your natural hand. But the time from here to whatever it is you're reaching for. Amen. Let me grab this bottle of water. So if I got this bottle of water and it's here and my hand is reaching for that bottle of water, there's a time space between here. In this case, it's very short, but still there's time in the spiritual realm, depending on what kind of demon you're up against. Amen. What kind of sickness and disease you're up against. Sometimes it takes you a little bit of time to pull it over. Amen. But nonetheless, I don't care how long it takes, how long it takes. It belongs to you. Healing belongs to you and you need to just take it. You just need to receive it. But the only way to take it, the only way to receive it is by faith. So let's get in the word today and build our faith up in the area of healing belongs to you. Amen. One of the chief ways that you can act on your faith, but first it has to be in your heart, is speaking. Amen. 
And we're going to do a little of that today. We're going to do a little of that today. I'm going to slow down and get it right. Amen. But it's not the only act. You, you can yield to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will lead you what to do. Sometimes you need to get up and get a praise going on. Amen. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is saying rejoice. Do what you couldn't do. Amen. If you got a problem with your foot or something. Amen. But wait now. Don't just step out on the water and not have faith for it. You need to have the word of God in your heart. You got to have faith in your heart before you act. A lot of people act because they're desperate or because they just want it. Amen. And they throw away their eyeglasses or throw away their medication and saying, oh, yeah, this is my faith. No, 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 no. You need faith in your heart first and then you need to act. Amen. That's part of the law of faith, which we'll get into more detail on our Sunday teaching. Today, I just want to get us in the gym, put on our boxing gloves, get the get the bag. Amen. And let's do some sparring. Let's get our faith fed and built up so that if sickness and disease tries to rear its ugly head in your life, amen, or if you have it in your life right now, you can take hold of the power of God that's already given to you. It's yours. It's the will of God. As much as it's the will of God that you be forgiven of your sins, health belongs to you. Come on. Somebody say amen out there. Look at Romans 8 and 10. And I'm going to read this out of the BBE translation. And it goes, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we are the preachers or the preachers of is the context is saying. In verse nine, it says, because if you say with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and have faith in your heart that God has made him come back from the dead, you will have salvation. For with the heart, man has faith to get righteousness and with the mouth, he says that Jesus is Lord to get salvation. So you got to have faith in your heart and you got to have faith in your mouth. It's an act of your faith to speak what you believe. One scripture said, we have believed, therefore we speak. Amen. Uh, so, and let's look at a few scriptures today. Amen. About healing. I'm just going to read the scripture and then I want you to act on the scripture. And the act is your speaking. And I God says it, that as we put this word into our heart, faith will come. Our faith will come. Our spiritual hand will be strengthened and we'll be able to lay hold of the spiritual power of God, that healing power, and it will come in and drive out every symptom. You don't do the work, but you have to receive by faith. In Jesus' ministry, he's our example, amen? Oftentimes, he would ask people as we read through, and if we had time, we'd read through some today, but for time's sake, I'll just uh, uh, refer to some of them. Many times he'd say, be it unto you according to your faith. Do you believe I can do that? Amen. Read through the Gospels and you'll see that. In those instances, people received or took, that word received is the same word as took, take, to take. People receive, receive their healing, amen, by their faith. Your faith has made you whole, made you whole Jesus would also often say, amen. Then sometimes, and we mentioned it at the beginning of this uh, teaching, that sometimes God just shows up with signs and wonders. He just miraculously healed people. It wasn't anything to do with their faith. He just did a sign and a wonder. Amen. He just walked up to the Peter, just walked up to, to the man at the gate, beautiful and said, silver and gold, I have none, but this is what I give you today. I don't think he's saying he didn't have any money. He just said, I'm not giving you money right now, boy. I'm fixing to give you in Jesus name. Get up walk. Amen. And he reached out his hand and the man got up and walked. It was just God put it on him. The gift of healing. Amen. Was in operation. And as we said earlier, we don't, we don't choose when that happened. God does the Holy spirit as he wills the gifts of the spirit. Those special uh, spiritual gifts go into operation. Amen. But on purpose as a child of God, you can, I can anytime we want to can receive the promises of God and in salvation. There's a lot of things, but we're focusing on today that in salvation, we know there's forgiveness of your sin and the power to make you righteous, righteous to regenerate your spirit is available. But that same sacrifice of Jesus' shed blood also gave you an inheritance that belongs to you called health and healing. 
Let's get in the Word and just read some scriptures of what the Word has to say about your healing. And then we're going to do some confessions. And I just want you to confess them after me today. We're in the gym. This is what you need to do. You can look at this over and over. If you got healing scriptures, amen, pull them out on paper. If you don't, on this site, you can just go in and look for a healing belongs to you. It's just a... Uh, a narrative is just an audio file that you can download to any device with more scriptures and confessions on them. And the confessions I'm going to do today, I'm going to read them in quite a few different translations. And then I'll let you know when to follow me along in the confession. Are you ready? Are you ready? Come on, get your faith built up. Hey Amen. I am in Psalms 91 verse one through six and verse 10. It says he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. He who sits under the secret protection of the Most High shall rest under the shadow of the Almighty. Anyone dwelling in the secret place of the Most High will procure himself lodging under the very shadow of the Almighty One. One who lives under the Most High screen lodges under Shaddai's canopy. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, who abides in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. He who, he who is dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, in the shade of the mighty, lodgeth habitually, he is saying of Jehovah. Happy is he whose resting place is in the secret of the Lord and under the shade of the wings of the Most High, who says of the Lord, he is my safe place and my tower of strength. He is my God. He who dwells says of the Lord. He who lives under the protection of the Most High, under his heavenly care, content to abide, can say to the Lord, you are my support, my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. He will take you out of the bird net and keep you safe from waste and disease. He will keep you safe from all hidden dangers and from all deadly diseases and from the deadly plague. It is he that rescues me from every treacherous snare, from every whisper of harm, sheltered under his arms, under his wings, nestling Thou art safe. His faithfulness will throw a shield about thee. His faithful promises are your armor. Nothing shall you fear of the evil things of the night or of the disease which takes men in the dark, the plague raving at noon, nor the devastating plague at noon, or the plague raging at midday, midday nor the plague that destroys at midday, nor of the deadly diseases that wasted that noonday, because you said, Jehovah is my refuge, you made the Most High himself your dwelling. Because you have said, I am in the hands of the Lord, the Most High is my safe resting place. No disaster will befall you, no calamity will come upon your home. There is no harm that can befall thee. No disaster will befall you, nor calamity come near your tent. And so no disaster will strike you. No violence will come near your home. So sickness will not approach you. Contagion will not enter your rest. Now let's release our faith. Amen. We got the word into our heart. Amen. So now we're going to act on our faith. And this is what we're going to say. Just repeat it after me and I'll go a little slow so you can say, I am abiding under the shadow of the almighty. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth me, is my refuge and fortress against disease. His word is my shield and buckler against sickness. I am trusting under his wings. 
There is healing in his wings. I'm not afraid of disease. Come on, say, I'm not afraid of disease. I'm not afraid of COVID-19. Why? Because my God is my shelter. My God is my refuge. My God, Jehovah Rapha, the creator of the universe, is my fortress. Sickness and disease, get out of my body right now. You have no place here. Ah, you don't belong to me and I don't belong to you. Jesus is Lord over my spirit, my soul, and my body. Amen. Let's read another one. Amen. We're not going to take long. I hope you come back next Thursday and we'll just continue along these teachings as long as the Lord say. But what we're doing is what we would normally do in our midweek services. It's more of a workshop. In other words, a how to putting it into practice. Amen. It's okay to know something, but it's another thing to do something. Uh, and like I said, when I first got born again, uh, people told me what I should do or not do. Amen. But they didn't tell me how to. So that's what I believe the Lord is putting on our heart today. A look, not so conventional teaching today, but I know you're learning something as well, but it's more saying, this is what you need to do when you hang up the phone, when you turn off this video, when you're sitting in the hospital bed, amen, especially if you got something going on, symptoms in your body right now, you need to take every moment you can, amen, and strengthen your faith, amen. It's your faith that'll make you whole. It's God's power that gives you the wholeness and the health and the healing, but by your faith, you can receive it just like your natural hand reaches out and takes something. But I submit to you, one of the reasons we can't reach out and receive and take our healing is because our strength is little. Our faith is little. Our, we are living more by what we see, feel, taste, and hear. So if a symptom comes or a doctor says something, we believe that more than what God has said. And the only way you can increase or strengthen your belief in what God has said over what someone else said Amen. Or what you see or feel is you got to get your, the word of God in abundance in your heart. Amen. And then your faith will lay hold of what already belongs to you. On the table is the bread. Jesus referred to it as the children's bread. You're a child of God and that healing bread belongs to you. It's on the table, spiritually speaking. All you need to do is lay hold of it. And here's how you do it. You get in the word of God long enough until your heart is full of the word of God. Amen. And your faith will be strong and you will lay hold of it no matter what, how long it takes. And it don't have to take long. Amen. Amen. If you get in the word long enough, you'll put on a little, little muscle. Amen. Faith muscle, so to speak. If you get in Mark 4 and 24 and the Amplify says that the, the measure of study and thought that you give to the truth is the measure of virtue or power that will come back to you. You need more virtue. You need more power, more faith power and more of healing power of God. You just get in the word of God and stay in it day and night, long as you can. God has said to us, commanded us, meditate in my word day and night. Amen. Let's read a couple more scriptures before we close today. I, I know you're getting this. And when I, when I hang up, download the teaching here on the website. Amen. I'll go and make it easier and accessible here, easier accessible here at iwordcenter.church. Amen. Well, it's actually already there. There's a link at the top, right up under the pictures of Helen and myself that says download free healing belongs to me on any, any device. You can download it, burn a CD, freely receive, freely give. Amen. And that's just got on there, uh, an abbreviated version of what I'm doing here. I'm reading more, uh, translations of the scripture that's on that CD, but let's read Exodus 15 verse 25 and 26. It says, he cried unto the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance. And there he proved them and said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which, have I, which I have bought, brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. I, the Lord, am your healer. For I, the Lord, am thy physician. I am the Lord, your life giver. Ooh, he's a life giver. I am Yahweh, thy physician. I, Jehovah, am healing thee. For I, the Lord, make you immune to them diseases. I, the Lord, will bring thee only health. 
Here's the confession. Repeat it with me and repeat it after me. God is speaking to me now saying, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He is watching over his word to perform it. He is the Lord that healeth me. He is healing me now. The word contains the ability to produce what it says. He is the Lord that healeth me. He is healing me now. His word is full of healing power. I receive this word now. I receive that healing that is in his word now. Healing is inherent in God's nature. God is in me. My body is the temple of God. My body is the temple of the Lord that healeth me. God is bigger than sickness and Satan. God is dwelling inside of me now. Healing me now. The Lord that healeth me is my shepherd. I do not lack healing. My body is in contact with the Lord that healeth me. My body has to respond to God's healing life and nature at work in me now. Healing is in God and God is in me. I thank you, Father, because you are my healer and you are healing me now. I believe I have received my healing. Amen. We got time maybe for one more. Amen. Let's read Exodus 23 and 25. Come back next week and we're going to continue with this if the Lord say the same. It says, and you shall serve the Lord your God. <clears throat> excuse me. Exodus 23 and 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And give worship to the Lord your God who will send a blessing on your bread and on your water. And I will take all disease away from from among you. I will free you from disease. I have turned aside sickness from your heart and keep sickness away from your company. And let's confess this together. Let's confess this together. Amen. Uh, the, the word I will is the strongest assertion, assertion that can be made in the English language. Amen. Uh, here's the confession. God is speaking to me now saying, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. God is watching over this word, performing it in me now. He is taking sickness away from the midst of me. I worship the Lord my God, who takes sickness away from the midst of me. Goodbye, sickness. Get out, sickness. The Lord has taken you away from the midst of me. Thank you, Father, for taking sickness away from me. I thank you for doing what you said. I got to do one more. It's getting good to me here. Amen. It's stirring my faith up. Amen. Deuteronomy 7 and 15. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which you know us upon thee, but will lay them all upon them that hate thee. And the confession is, the Lord has taken away from me all sickness. His word contains the ability to do what it says. His word will not return void, but accomplish what it was sent to do. The Lord is healing me now. The Lord has taken away from me all sickness, every trace of weakness and deficiency. 
Sickness is going out of me now. Thank you, Father, for taking away from me all sickness like you said. Now, if you still have symptoms, amen, if it ain't all gone, what you want to do is you want to keep your confession, your act in line with what you believe. You believe God is your healer. You believe that in salvation, you not only were redeemed from sin, but all the effects of sin by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. The things that wounded him was for your healing. Amen. You believe that, then you need to stay in agreement, not based on what you feel. You believe you receive it before the symptoms are gone. You believe you receive it before you have it. Jesus said in Mark 11, 22, 23, if you don't believe you have it, that you receive it before you have it, Amen. There's no need to believe it when you see all the symptoms gone. You got it. Amen. So faith works this way. You believe you have received it because God is a God of his word. Amen. You believe you have received your healing before you see it. And Jesus said, if you believe you have received it, you shall have it. Amen. Amen. So Come back with us next week, amen, and we're going to pick up here with some more teaching on healing belongs to you, but more so the how-to, the getting in the gym, the sparring, the, the strengthening and building up of your faith that you can lay hold of every promise that God has for you. We're going to focus on healing, and if God says go into something else, we will. We may focus in how to walk in love by faith, amen, how to uh, walk in uh, wealth and prosperity by faith. Amen. How to walk in self-control by faith. These same principles that we're talking about for healing right now will work in every area. Just like in the laws of physics, there's certain things when they're in place, they work the same way every time. Amen. The law of gravity. There's a certain force that is put on planet Earth by the spinning, the gravitational pull that works the same way every time. I don't care if you're tall, short, uh, skinny, got a, got a little more weight than you want. If you jump off a building, down you will go. Amen. If you throw a feather down, if it's not lighter than air, down it will come. Amen. If you throw a rock, down it will come. The forces or the principles of physics of gravitational pull acts the same every time. Every time. The, the laws and physics of lift that causes a bird to fly and an airplane to fly. When you have those principles in place, I don't care who you are. I don't care what color you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what kind of education you have. If you understand the principles of the laws of lift, amen, and you use them and put them into motion, you will fly a plane, amen. But if you jump in an airplane and you can have all the principles in place, but if you don't pull the throttle back, amen, to get the thrust going, you will stay on the ground. And I submit to you, that's what happened to a lot of believers. They believe in their heart that God is a healer and that he's going to heal them. And then they sit on the runway waiting for the healing instead of putting the foot to the pedal, amen, or pulling back on that throttle to engage the thrust. And the thrust in this instance is you acting on what you believe. And one of the chief ways to act on what you believe is speaking. Amen. Your words are powerful. We just teach the whole series on that. Go back and listen to it. Your words are powerful because they either release life or death. They either take or receive what's in life or what's in death. Receive what God has given to you, all that he's given to you through the death and resurrection, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And one of those things we know to be true by the word of God is healing. Amen. It's God's will for you to be healed every time that the enemy tries to put sickness and disease on you because healing belongs to you. Well, before we close, let's pray the prayer of salvation for those who want to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And not only will he save you and forgive you, he'll heal you today. Amen. Amen. And let's pray for those who need to rededicate. You backslid, went away from God, but it's time to get back in the kingdom of God and live for Jesus because Jesus is coming soon. We're in the last of the last days. Amen. I don't know what, how many days it's going to be, but all the signs are coming together for Jesus soon return. And you don't want to miss out on going with him when he comes. Amen. Also, if you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you don't speak in a heavenly language that's uh, given to you by the Holy Spirit, the, some translations refer to it as tongues, you need to receive the baptism today because he's your helper, he's your teacher, he's your strengthener, he's the one that helps you to pray accurately, amen. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. So just lift your hands up with me today and let's pray. Jump in, whichever one applies to you and those that don't, just reaffirm your faith in it. Say, Father God, I believe that 
All are born as sinners. That includes me. So I ask that you would forgive me of all my sins. And I come with a repentant heart to change, to show me, God, whatever area I need to change in. I say I'm willing and to do it. Just show me how and help me to do it. I believe that Jesus died in my place for the whole world and you raised him from the dead. I believe that and you promised me, God, that if I believe it in my heart and confess it with my lips, I would be saved. I take you at your word right now. Be it unto me according to your word. I believe I receive it. I take it now. Salvation, forgiven of all my sins and a regeneration process has taken place in me. And I'm a new man. I'm a new woman. No longer any sin to my record, restored to right fellowship with you, Father God. Now, Father God, I ask that you would fill me with your spirit and cause me and give me the ability to pray in that language, that heavenly language that I talk directly to you. I ask you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name. Now, for those who have been uh, born again, but you want, walked away from the goodness of God, just ask God to forgive you of your sins right now. Amen. Let's pray right now together. Say, Father, forgive me for my sins. I ask that you forgive me and I repent. I purpose to change whatever thinking, whatever habits, whatever speech that does not line up with your ways. I purpose to change it and do it your way. Forgive me, God, and cleanse me now from all unrighteousness. If you believe that in your heart, God just restored you back into fellowship. Find a good place. Right here is a good place to learn how to live in this righteousness and in the kingdom of God and be taught the word of God. Amen. Uh, come back here every Thursdays and Sundays and we'll keep you updated on when we get back together and, and live. Amen. So again, thank you again for joining us. Uh, for all of those uh, at the International Word Center Church, Helen, myself, we say thank you. Look forward to seeing you soon uh, in a church meeting and getting together and worship and praising the Lord. So see you Sunday. We'll continue teaching on the subject of the law of faith and see you next Thursday on the fresh upload on that healing belongs to you and the how to how to receive what belongs to you. Amen. So you're free. Amen. Because who the sun sets free is free indeed. And you're free to move around the world and do the will of God in Jesus name. Amen. Shout it out one more time. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things.